Fred here from Math Math and Engineering, and we're going to do a video today on the finding the inverse of a matrix using the cofactor method. Okay, so this is a linear algebra technique. You'd find this in a first year university course. I know a lot of people have been uh, have been messaging us and telling us to do linear algebra videos. So we're going to start with this, and it's a pretty straightforward method. And you know, we're just uh, we'll just get right into the question. Okay, so the question asks. Determine the inverse of the matrix using the cofactor method. Okay, so what is the cofactor method? Well, let's write that first. Okay, so we have a matrix B equals this here, this three by three matrix. And the cofactor method, okay, for the inverse, I'm gonna write the formula over here, okay, is going to be, so the inverse of B is equal to one over the d determinant of B, all right? And that is going to be times the cofactor of B transverse. All right, so that's just the formula that we are going to need to use to solve this. All right, and in the question, it will uh, it will probably state that you need to use this method. So don't think you can just put it in your calculator and get the inverse because that's going to be a zero. All right, and before we actually start, I want to say that these are all past exam questions. Okay, so um, that from from when we did the course, so this is really good practice for you if you uh, just want to try this by yourself before looking at the solution. With that being said, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to need to solve is we're going to need to solve for one of these variables within the uh, within the formula, right? So we have two different variables. We have determinant of b and cofactor of b. Okay, so let's start with the determinant, all right? And from this point, I'm sure you guys kind of have an idea of how to uh, solve for the determinant, all right? Uh, so I'm not going to go into how to find a determinant of a matrix. Uh, I'm just going to do it, all right? So we're going to look for this uh, this second column here, all right? And that's where we're going to determine the determinant because you always want to choose the column or the row with the most zeros in it, okay? Because it's going to be the easiest to calculate. So let's go ahead and start. So we have the determinant of B, okay, is equal to. And right over here, I'm just going to, before we start the determinant, I'm going to write the kind of the convention or the sign convention when you're finding a determinant, okay? So on the top left, you're going to have a plus, okay? This uh, a i j, so a11 value is going to be plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, okay? So I'll show you how to use this in a sec, but that's just, it always follows the same kind of convention here, and you just need to repeat that, okay, every time you do a, a question like this, okay? So I'll show you how to use this when we find the determinant. So we are going to have zero here, right? So we're going to start with this column, zero. Okay, that's going to be negative. It's not going to matter because it's zero, but just to just to show you how this works. Okay, zero, and then we're going to have two times one minus, okay, and we have zero times negative two. All right, that's going to be the first term. Okay, then we're going to go down to this term here, zero again, and it's going to be plus, okay, plus zero, and we're going to multiply that by three times one minus zero times two. Perfect. And if we go ahead and look at the third term, you no, know, these are obviously going to be zero, but I just want to write it out so you can see kind of what's happening here, right? So the third term is going to be one, okay, because we're working on the second column and it's going to be a negative, okay? The one is going to be a negative. So we're going to say negative one and we're going to multiply that by three times negative two, okay, minus two times two. Okay, so three times negative two minus two times two. All right, and if we go ahead and we calculate that out, and this is gonna be zero, this is gonna be zero, right? So this is going to be equal to, we have negative one times negative six minus four. All right, and what is that? Well, that's uh, negative 10 times one, so that's going to be equal to 10. So the determinant of B is equal to 10. Perfect, okay, so that's the first step in solving this problem, all right? Next, we need to know what the cofactor of B is. So what's the cofactor matrix, okay? So essentially, we're going to break the matrix up into the matrix of minors, okay? So, and it's pretty much exactly the same thing that we did in this step, okay? For, for each term in the matrix, except we're not multiplying here by this term in the front, okay? So let's just, I'll do the first couple, first few, and then you guys can do the rest because uh, I don't wanna do nine terms of this. The video is gonna be too long. So we're gonna now go ahead and we're gonna find the cofactor matrix, okay? So the cofactor matrix of B is going to be uh, essentially the matrix of minors, okay? So it's going to be how we found the the determinant of B, so these steps here, okay? My, not including multiplying by the term uh, 
that we're looking for, okay? And that'll make a little more sense once I just show you a few. So I'm just gonna do a couple examples here and then you can, uh, you can just do the rest on your own because the video is gonna be too long if I do all nine terms. So let's start with the first term, okay? Of, okay, we're gonna say the first term of the cofactor of matrix B, okay? So we'll say that is A11, okay? So the first row, first column term. Okay, so that's going to be equal to, and all we're gonna do is we're just gonna repeat this step essentially. So we have zero times one, okay, minus, okay, zero times one minus negative two times one. Okay, so zero times one minus negative two times one here. And that is going to be equal to, okay, we're gonna have zero term here. This is going to be negative two times negative one. It's going to be two. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to write the cofactor of B down here. Okay, and the first term in the matrix is two. Let's go to the second term. Okay, so the second term, we're going to take the first row, second column. Okay, so first row, second column. Okay, and let's go ahead and solve for that. So the second term is going to be, so we're looking for this one here, right? So it's going to be two times one. Okay, so we have two times one, two times one minus zero times negative two, okay? Perfect, and what's that going to be? That's going to be two, all right? And now, for the cofactor matrix, we do need to take into account this uh, sign convention here, okay? So since we're looking for this value, okay, the in the first row and the second column, we're going to need to multiply our answer by negative one, okay? So in this answer here, in the first one, we multiplied by one, It was it's gonna be the same thing, right? For the second term, okay, and this, cofactor matrix just kind of, uh, it, it, it just alternates between positive and negative depending on where you are, okay? So it's always gonna kind of follow this convention. If you have a bigger matrix or a smaller matrix, it's just gonna have either more or less terms, but it'll always alternate like this, okay? So um, in this case, we're gonna have to multiply the answer times negative one, okay? Times this uh, sign convention in the cofactor matrix, that's gonna give us negative two. Perfect, and uh, let's just do the I guess the second row in the first column, and we'll call that the third term. We'll say it's A21, okay, just, just as an example, and then you guys can do the rest, okay? So once again, we have a negative here, so we'll do that after. And let's just find the matrix of minors here. So we have zero times one, right? Zero times one, okay, minus one times two. And that's going to be equal to negative two. All right, and if we go ahead and Multiply that by our sign convention. So the negative one here, that's going to be equal to two. Perfect, okay. So I'm just gonna fill in the rest of the cofactor matrix for you just because this video will be too long if I don't. So let's go ahead and do that. Perfect, okay. So now uh, if you wanna go ahead and try that, stop the video and try and get that you know, on your own, that would be great practice for your exam. If not, we're gonna continue. So what we have here, okay, we've solved for the determinant of B We've solved for the cofactor of B, and we have everything we need now to solve for the inverse of B, because you see we have the determinant and the cofactor. So all we need to do is find the transverse of this matrix, okay? So the cofactor B transverse, okay, is going to be, and uh, you know, I'm sure we all know how to find the transverse. Just take this, uh, we're just gonna flip essentially the columns and the rows. So we have this column here, that's gonna become the first row. So we have two, two, zero, okay? We have uh, the next one, which is going to be negative two, three, 10, and two, negative three, and zero. So that's the transverse, okay? So we've taken each column, and we've turned each column into a row. Perfect. So let's go ahead and just plug everything in, okay? And you know, if you want to leave your answer in this form, I think it's perfectly acceptable. Double check with your uh, professor how he would or she would like it done, okay? so. If, if they want you to expand this one over determinant B and f multiply it term by term into the matrix or just leave it um, as is, that's kind of up to your professor. So we have one over determinant B, determinant B is 10. So we have one over 10, okay? And that is into the cofactor of B, the transverse of that, which is here, right? So we go two, two, zero, negative two, three, 10, two, negative three, zero. 
And that is the final answer. So the inverse of b we have here. And if you wanted to, like I said, go and go ahead and multiply 1 over 10 into this matrix, uh, I think you could. If, if it's acceptable that you leave it in this form, I highly suggest leaving it like this because you know, you're less prone to make mistakes, obviously, because there's less calculation. So I would leave it like that if you can. Thanks for watching. Uh, pretty simple, straightforward method. Uh, let's get into some more complicated stuff in the later videos. Uh -huh.